So in the book is this diagram here, figure, I guess it's 310. Um, and it shows basically the process of how a stack grows, as functions are called. So, And, and, uh, and there's also the code for this in the book, so I suggest you reference this. But anyway, basically you see that A is called, and when A is called, we push the return address on the stack. We save the state of the registers and, and that kind of thing. And then the next time we call another function, like B, we call B, well, A stuff is still stored here on the stack. And then uh, B's, B's return address, CPU registers, and also local data, or automatic data, as we'll sometimes call it, uh, is stored there as, there as well. And then when we call C, you see that C's info is there, but B's still there. So as we unwind from these calls here, as C returns, well, first of all, the place where... C needs uh, an instruction in RAM to return to, and that's what the return address is. So, so the, your code will actually read this address and return back to it. But we still have this data on the stack, and so for B, and so B will continue executing. And when B returns, it re reads this. Uh, your code reads this address and then returns back to to the to A, and then A uses this data, and so on and so forth. So you can think of calling a function a lot like instantiating a function. Because every time you invoke a function, the return address is saved, the registers are saved, locals are here, and so on and so forth. And so, say we called B 20 times, well, we'd have uh, 20 copies of this, distinct copies of this, for each invocation of the function B. So that's well. That's when you hear me say instantiate a function. That's that's exactly what I mean. And so, so the, this is the stack frame. I actually was asked one time in an interview. They're looking for that term, and I instead said activation context, which is another term I learned about in my programming languages course. Of course, I've never heard it since then. It's actually known as stack frame, and we use this a lot uh, in debugging. We'll use some debug tools to figure out the stack frame. So I just want to do something a little weird to play around with that concept here. I'm going to make a function, I'm going to call it recurse, and it will take value, and um, you should remember from your recursion days, don't let recursion scare you. In fact, one super fun thing to do is to open Chrome and Google recursion. Because when you Google recursion, it says, did you mean recursion? And you click on it, and yeah, I did mean recursion. I, you can, do you get it? I hope you get it. Because <laughs> we just keep Keep clicking. Yeah, all right. All right, never mind. Okay, so basically I'm going to make a function that calls itself. And uh, I'm going to say, let's make the base case first. If value is zero, return. Uh, otherwise, let's just call the function again and value minus one. So I'm going to declare a local variable here, int um, local. It's, uh, let's, give it, let's give it value times 10. Then I'm going to declare a pointer, an int pointer local ptr gets the address of local. So so think about what I'm doing here. I'm getting a pointer to a variable on the stack. Right? And the stack is that, that diagram I had up earlier here where basically I'm, I'm, I'm defining a local variable on the stack. I'm getting a pointer to this variable. And then watch what dirty trick I'm going to do. Well, it's not dirty. It's actually kind of interesting. But don't, don't rely on any behavior. This is, this is actually kind of dangerous. Uh, I like it when people say dangerous. It's not really going to hurt you. It just might make your program explode if if you do this, uh, if you do something stupid with it. Okay, <clears throat> so so local pointer, and then I'm going to say now when we invoke uh, recurse here, I'm going to recurse. Let's just say four. So we'll invoke four. We'll, we'll instantiate <laughs> recurse four times. And I'm going to say um, let's see. I basically want to walk this pointer around the stack and just show you that we actually are, we have a stack and that local is stored on the stack and also a local pointer is stored on the stack. So because I declared them locally here or defined them actually locally. So let's do a for loop int i get zero i less than um, I'm gonna make a guess ten times four minus value and the reason I'm doing four here is is basically I want I want to I, I called it with four and I know this is in terrible coupling I have going on here, but I called it with four so I don't on the first invocation of recurse there's nothing really interesting to see so I don't want to go too far uh, into the stack while on the first call but the second time I want to do more I want to do more bear with me just just watch what I'm about to do it's it's kind of interesting then I plus plus 
Okay, and then in the body of I, I'm going to see out uh, star local pointer, and I'm, I'm printing out the value of whatever local pointer is pointing at. So local, whoops, local pointer, and line, and then I'm going to increment the pointer. And remember, incrementing the pointer moves it the size of whatever it's pointing to. In this case, it's pointing to an int, so we'll move four bytes each time I do plus plus. Oh, I don't know why I did p. Let's do local pointer plus plus. All right, so so basically, and the reason I'm doing plus plus is some stacks count up, some count down. It really doesn't matter if it's growing up or growing down. It's still a stack, even if it's upside down. And uh, it just so happens on on my architecture that it it uh, gr it grows down. So in order to go up, I have to do plus plus. All right, so let's just watch this. I'm gonna let's just run this. See, hopefully it doesn't blow up. So uh, one other thing I want to do before we actually invoke this. I want to announce that we're calling recurse. So let's say recurse. Uh huh. Value. Endline. And I actually want to insert an endline uh, just so we have some white space in there, I guess, in the console. You could call it black space. But anyway, all right. Recurse. So we announce the function, put an endline. All right, let's run this. Okay. So let's look here. Here we go. Recurse four again. I told you I didn't, there wouldn't be much interesting to see. So, so there's nothing printed out for recurse four. Recurse three. Now look at the stack here. We have thirty and three, and we expected it to be thirty because because that's what we initially assigned it to is uh, three times ten. Okay, but then look what happens when we get to two. Recurse two. So we see the twenty, and then we see our our two here. And guess where 2 is? What 2 is? 2 is the value being passed in. And then they, these are probably the stored registers or maybe our pointer value. It looks like this is the same for this negative 885, eight, whatever. It's the same for each one. So I'm not going to infer too much about what's going on here as far as what means what. But what I do want you to notice is here's 20 and 2. Here's 30 and 3. So here's roughly one stack frame. And here's another stack frame. Let's go on and see recurse 1. Maybe I can make this window a little taller here. Yeah, let's bring this down. Okay. So recurse one, we have the ten and the one. So there's there's this instance of the recurse function. And then the two, the twenty oh we got two twenties. That's interesting. I don't know which one's which. You know, I could probably guess that this one's our parameter and this is something else. But but uh here's roughly another stack frame. And then um here's the ten and so on and so forth. So so that's stack frames. I just wanted to write a little code. And since again, don't don't get a pointer to your stack and start walking it around like I'm doing here. And then I I mean it's safe I guess to read from it, but it's really not defined what's where, and you shouldn't rely on that. It's it's simply just a matter of hey, I want to show you. You can't actually look at these stack frames and see yes they're real. Uh, yes, C++ hides it away from you. Any language does when you invoke functions or methods, whatever you want to call them. But in the end, it's really all about bits and bytes and stacks and heaps. And, and it's really just bits. It's all bits when, you, when it comes down to it.